how can we take photos like this? Let me share my approach from taking the photos to editing them. With spring finally here, it is the perfect time for flower photography. The great thing about this is you can find flowers everywhere, so no need to drive for hours to get to your location. Also, we are not that weather or light dependent. Although, of course, the right light makes everything much better. First, let's start looking for a fitting subject. One thing that is very, very important is the background. We want the flower to stand out. To achieve this, we shouldn't include any detailed structure in the back. But this does not mean we need to photograph the subject in front of a plain background like the sky. Instead, we need to make sure that there is enough distance between subject and background. As we are using a wide open aperture, this in turn means everything behind the flower will be buttery smooth. And that's exactly what we want. If we put the background too close to the subject, we are not able to separate those two, even with a wide open aperture. This usually results in a very chaotic image with too many elements to look at. Similarly, you don't want to have too many things going on in the foreground, but it's common practice to place stuff here and there to create a more pleasing composition. As an example, you can use the foreground to create a frame around the subject. Once I found the right flower, it's time to set up the shot. To get the background right, you want to get low almost on the ground to be on eye level with the flower. This is the most vital step to get these professional looking shots, but it will also make the upcoming steps a little bit harder because we want to use focus stacking later on. And that means we have to lock the camera in place. You can shoot the subject out of hand, but this is only viable if you don't plan on focus stacking. However, you won't get really good images that way usually. Alternatively, you can use something like a sandbag, which you can put on the ground and then place the camera on top. This way the camera is more or less locked and you can carefully do the focus stacking. However, the best way to do this is of course with the tripod. Not every tripod can be set up that low. I'm using the KF Concept A254 C4, which can be set up pretty much to shoot on ground level. And again, that's exactly what we need for these kind of images. Regarding the focal length, I usually use anything between 50 and 300 millimeters. This heavily depends on the subject. If you want the flower to fill the frame, I go for a longer focal length. If I want to include more of the surrounding area, I use something wider. This is especially helpful if you want to include more of the foreground. And as mentioned earlier, we want to use a wide open aperture for a smooth background. I usually go with something around f4 to f5.6, since that's just the biggest my Sigma flower shooting lens has to offer. If you can go wider, go wider. If not, just make sure the distance between subject and flower is big enough to blur it. The aperture will allow us to use faster shutter speeds which in turn helps us to prevent motion blur on the subject. And less motion blur is exactly what we want for focus stacking. In order to keep the shutter speed fast, I also recommend to make use of higher ISO. Modern cameras can easily allow you to go up to 3200 without having to worry about noise. So with the camera settings dialed in, we can start taking pictures. I talked a lot about focus stacking, so let me explain why and how we do it. By using focus stacking, instead of only a small sharp area, we can make the subject sharp from front to back. And this effect looks especially cool on these kind of images with a smooth background and a somewhat smooth foreground. It makes the subject stand out much, much more and gives the whole image a way more professional touch. It's the one thing that separates the snapshots from the really good images. My approach for photos like this is I start with the focus on the back of the subject. After taking the image, I very, very 
slightly shift the focus further to the front. And again, take a picture. Depending on the aperture you're using, you have to take more images with more focus points, as a wide aperture produces a very shallow depth of field. Keep in mind, on windy days, it's really, really hard to focus deck because those tiny flowers are moving around constantly in the wind. So with this knowledge, you now have the base recipe to capture these awesome macro flower shots. From here on, you can add a little more spice by experimenting with different things. What I love to do, I love to use a spray bottle. And with this, you can put tiny water droplets on these flowers. Now that we have our images, Let's take a look at the editing. Now that is the image I want to show you the editing for. You can see I have applied a few of those water droplets on the flower using that spray bottle. And this is one of many, many images of the focus stacking process. I'm going to use this as my base image since the subject is sharp in the center. The editing will be quite intense, so be prepared for some heavy manipulation. And we want to start this in the lights panel of Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop because I'm going to focus tag and therefore I don't have to switch around from Lightroom to Photoshop later on. Now what I want to do first is I want to make this whole shot a little darker by bringing down the exposure. And what this does is makes the whole image darker, but it kind of helps to separate the subject more from the background. I'm going to continue bringing down the highlights just a little bit. And at the same time, I'm going to add some whites. This will give the image some more punch. Perfect. Right away, we can also work on the white balance in the color panel. And what I want to do here is I do want to make this shot slightly colder. So let's bring down the temperature. This will kind of heavily alter the color of the flower. Again, I just want to point out this is some heavy manipulation and the flower will not end up having its original color later on. I also want to bring up the tint, just introducing some more magentas to this image this way. And then, and then I'm going to bring up the vibrance. Okay, that looks nice so far. I also want to head down into the effects tab and apply a little bit of texture some clarity and maybe even some dehaze. This will just help with the contrast. While we're in this panel, we can also apply a little bit of vignetting, bringing even more attention to the subject. Okay, now this looks quite good so far. However, with a bit of masking, we can really enhance this image. So let's go into the masking panel. And the first thing I want to do is I want to make the subject pop a little more. Now to select this flower, I'm going to use a color range mask and simply select a color from right here. That's looking quite nice. What I'm doing now is I want to bring up the exposure. I also want to bring down the highlights to prevent any blown out areas in this part. I'm going to drop the shadows immensely for some more contrast. I'm also going to drop the blacks for the same effect. And we can carefully bring up the whites, again, just improving the contrast. Now, let's see. I do think I want to bring down the temperature specifically for this color tone. And I want to bring down the saturation to not overwhelm the image with this blue color tone. Okay. And at this point, we can make the subject sharper by introducing texture. And we can add some clarity. Perfect. Now let's work on the surrounding area. I'm going to create a subject selection mask. That's pretty much the same than before. However, this time we also have selected those yellow things in the center. I don't want to work on the subject, so I'm just clicking this icon right here to invert the selection. That's looking great. And what I want to do to the back is to add more contrast, further separating the background from the subject. And I'm also going to drop the texture and I'm going to drop the clarity. This makes the background even smoother and it just looks more pleasing. Okay, now let's work on the bottom part. I'm going to use a linear gradient and drag it up like this. Of course, we don't want to affect the subject. So I'm going to say subtract and choose 
subject. And then what I'm going to do to the foreground is to bring down the exposure just like this. And this really helps to make the flower stand out from this image. Now there's one more thing I want to do. Let's grab a radial gradient and I'm going to place it coming down from the top right corner like this. Again, I'm saying subject, subject. And what I'm doing with this radial gradient is I'm going to add some light coming in from the top by increasing the exposure. I'm also going to increase the whites a bit and the blacks. That looks awesome. And with this out of the way, we have done the masking for this shot. This is the image without the masking, and here we have it with the masks applied. You can see that's a huge, huge difference. Now let's continue with a little bit of color grading. Therefore, we want to head into the color mixer. And first off, let's head into the hue panel. I want to change the hue of the warmer tones a bit, so I'm going to drop the red tones. I'm also going to drop the orange tones. Let's drop them quite a bit. And I want to drop the yellow tones. This mostly affects the background and I'm doing this because I think those warmer color tones like they are now nicely work together with the blue color tone of this flower. So next let's head into the saturation tab and here I just want to bring up the warmer tones slightly and maybe even add a little bit of aqua here. Okay, awesome. Then with the color mixer out of the way, we can also apply a little bit of split toning. And for these kind of images, I like to only work on the shadows and midtones. So let's start with the shadows. And as always, I'm going with a very cold color tone for the shadows, somewhere in this range, but I'm only using a tiny amount of saturation to not make it too strong. That looks great. Let's head into the midtones. And for the midtones, I think I want to go with a warm color tone like this and bring up the saturation, which helps to improve the background a bit. Wonderful. Finally, what we can do as well is to go into the calibration tab and here just play around with these sliders. For this image, I'm going to bring up red. I'm going to bring up green. And I'm going to bring up the blue saturation. I'm also going to drop the blue primary hue just like this, altering the colors a little more, but I like how this is looking. Now we're almost done. I just want to head into the optics tab and check the remove chromatic aberration setting. That's something I always do for all my images. And then let's head into the details tab to sharpen this image. I'm going to drop the radius, increase the details. And for this image, masking is super important since we don't want the background to get sharpened. So I'm holding down the Alt key while increasing the masking slider. We just want the subject to get sharpened like that. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Perfect. So that is the raw editing for one of these images. Before, after. As I said, this is some quite heavy transformation, but I really love how this looks. So next up, the focus stacking. We have edited the base image. We now want to copy these settings to all the other images of the sequence. So with the base image selected, I'm going to the start of the sequence, hold down the shift key, click on the image, and then right click, synchronize settings, check all and hit OK. Then let's do the same on the other side. Let's go to the end of the sequence, right click, synchronize settings, and make sure to check all and hit OK. And now that we have the editing on all our images, we want to select all the images and then open objects. And once Photoshop has opened up all the images, we now need to stack these in one Photoshop file. So what I'm doing is I go through the images one by one. I'm hitting Control A to select everything. Hit Control C to copy this image. Then let's close this one. And I'm using this as my base Photoshop file. And I'm going to hit Control V to pass the other image in here. And I continue this process until I'm done with all the images. All right. And once we are done with that, select all the layers, go to Edit, choose Auto Align Layers, and hit OK. 
This will align the flower because it was slightly moving due to the wind, but I think Photoshop should be able to fix that. Once the alignment is done, let's go to edit one more time with all the layers still selected and choose auto blend layers. Again, just hit OK and hopefully Photoshop will generate a super sharp image out of this. Now, as you can see, this looks great. There might be a few unsharp areas here and there, but I think I'm quite happy with the outcome. So what we want to do now, let's merge everything hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. Then we want to apply some cropping. So I'm hitting the C key and let's adjust the image a little bit, taking away all the gaps on the outside. Now, all that's left to do is we want to clean up this image. So let's grab the spot healing brush. There are a few sensor spots. And of course, I want to get rid of these things in the foreground, which are really, really distracting. All right, and here we have the image. Now, this is a super clean, focused, stacked image of a flower. We don't have much going on in the foreground, and there is not that much going on in the background as well. This does not work every time, but as I said, you just need to try a few things, play stuff in the foreground, maybe adjust the background however you like it to get a proper result. If you have any other tricks to share for this kind of photography, let us know in the comments and also let me know what you think of this image. So thank you for watching this video and see you guys next time.